All right. So um, we're going to talk about the vocabulary in units 12 and 13, some highlights, OK? Um, the, uh, let's talk about the verbs here. And what they do is give you the principal parts of the three verbs, the three athematic verbs. Dido me, histe me, and um, antithe me, which is on the following page. Along with them, they give you um, some compounds. So the principal parts are, are definitely worth looking at. You, you know, I, I, I repeat to you that outside of the, the um, present, the aorist, and the aorist, these verbs are, are quite regular in their formation. So we have future doso. Um, the, air, the perfect passive, middle passive is dedomai, the aorist passive is adothain. There's nothing funny about those forms, they're just like everything else you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the same goes for histe me, stay so, and, um, and hestamai is a little bit weird, as a, but no, it's not. It's just a normal, perfect middle passive participle. And estothane, okay, you've got vowel alternation of the stem, but that's uh, it's what you would expect it to be when you see it. But let's talk about the compounds of them. Okay, so they give you apodidome as a compound verb of didome, and they tell you it means give back or pay or permit, and in the middle it means sell. Okay, give back is the, the, what we do expect from the regular function of apo, mm -hmm. is a pre verb, right? It means to do something in return to somebody else. Um, and so, uh, and therefore, pay. That's the regular meaning of it. The most regular meaning of it is pay. And the middle sense of it as a verb to sell is also quite common in real Greek. Okay? One of the reasons that you, you know, it seems like we're expending a lot of effort to learn three verbs, but in, when you start reading real Greek, they're everywhere. they're everywhere, and there's a huge number of compounds, and they, mm -hmm. they've been around so long that they have very developed meanings. Mm -hmm. So it's not just didome apa, just give back. It has a whole developed set of meanings and a different middle and stuff like that. So the same thing goes with histeme, where they've given us two compounds. Ap histeme, that's histeme with apa, the preposition that means away, okay, and can mean back. But here has a very specific meaning, which is a weird meaning from a point of, semantic point of view and also from a political point of view because it's a political word mm -hmm. and it means to cause someone else to revolt right. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is not a concept in our political vocabulary but it's a hugely important thing in Greek city-states so you make another city-state revol revolt from the imperialistic power that it, it's subject to okay it's it's it sounds strange. It it is strange, but it's real. Okay, and it's a thing that that happens in in Greek uh, history. So it's a transitive verb. Okay, it takes a direct object. Um, we would think that such a we we wouldn't have such a problem. But the way you say revolt in our sense of the word is with the intransitive form. Remember, this is a compound of his statement, which in the middle is intransitive mm -hmm. and it has the old aorist has the intransitive meaning, and that means just revolt in our sense of the word. Oh, sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Have we lost? Oh no, we're back in the loop again. Oh, oh there, there it goes. Okay. Sorry. Phew. <laughs> I right. should probably move that thing though. Get, get it out of the way. Yeah. So, so um, the middle is intransitive. Middle intransitive. Uh, uh, Middle and intransitive second and, and second aorist are both, in a sense, revolt, which is what we think of as revolt, but which, from a Greek point of view, is not such a normal use. Okay, make someone else revolt is it's like, you know, Homer Simpson's campaign slogan, as when he ran for mayor of Springfield, let <laughs> someone else do it. <laughs> That's kind of cause somebody else to revolt is a real Greek concept. Anyhow. <laughs> All right, so um, the other compound of histeme that they've given you us is kath histeme. Mm. That is a compound of kata plus histeme. And, and it, it's, it means to, in the active sense, okay, which is the normal one, it means to appoint someone or to establish an institution. Again, these are social and political terms. These are big time concepts in Greeks, Greek daily life. So you appoint somebody to an office, you establish a certain kind of government. This is the, the, the verb that means these things, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you can have a, a actually use a hoi kathes totes, the perfect power support cut system. It means the people who are in power and stuff like that. So you you come across these words all the time, but um, in the in the uh, intransitive sense, okay, mm -hmm. um, which again because its system it, it has a pretty active transitive and intransitive sense, sense, just like the, remember the in, the transitive ones is based on the meaning to make somebody something stand, so mm -hmm. it means establish something, right? And then the intransitive sense means for something to exist. It comes to be just a verb of existence. Right. Okay, <laughs> it gets refined out of out of all the kinds of specializations into something general like that. Okay, hmm. um, the, this lesson also teaches you the special meaning of the verb kataluo, which means destroy or dissolve something. Um, it's a more common form of luo in real Greek. Uh, let's talk about the compounds of tifeme. Um, what they give you uh, in in this lesson is ana tifeme. So tithime, we said, means put or place, and also means to, to, to set something in place. Uh, um, and anatithime means to set something up, literally, but, but it has a very specialized meaning, um, which is to dedicate something to a god. Okay? And that's the most common sense of it. So you dedicate a statue, you dedicate a, a clay pot, you dedicate a clay image of a god or a goddess to the god, that's anatitheme, okay? So we have in English a derivative of this, the English word anathema, mm -hmm. which means something that's, in Greek it means a statue that's been dedicated to a god. So it means a pagan god, and when Christianity comes, it becomes anathema, which is mm, something bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's about the history of the world and the advent of Christianity. All right, the, the other verbs in this lesson... Um, aside from tithime, histime, and didome, or there's only one, I guess. Oh, there are two. There's phileo. This is finally the, mm -hmm. the denominative verb from philos, which means to love someone. Um, and uh, and then there's phobetomai, the verb to be afraid, to fear, which we obviously need for fearing clauses. Notice these are both, the first one is just a plain old epsilon contract verb, nothing remarkable about its forms, just like poieo. Phobetomai um, doesn't have any particularly peculiar forms except that it has a uh, aorist passive as its aorist, okay. a phobe thing. And uh, um, it's, a, it's an, an epsilon contract deponent verb. Okay? A couple of other things in this lesson are the first word in the lesson, which is a blank. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a weird concept. This is a word that has no nominative because it means one another. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you can't have one another be a subject of a sentence, but you can It can be the object or the indirect object, um, or uh, 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 or the genitive. So you, you, we can be friends of one another. They can like one another, and you can do some. They can do something for one another, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't be the subject. So this this word, alelon, uh, the genitive is alelon. The accusative, the dative is alelus, and the and the and the and the uh, dative is ale lois, is just two forms of the word alas mung together. Right. right. One of them, the first one has has the two L's, the second one has only one, okay? And you have the regular rule of the lengthening of the alpha into an eta when you compound. This is a certain kind of very old sort of compounding in Greek. Um, but uh, um, the, the it, it has this reciprocity idea that's inherent in the two forms of of alos in one sentence. Remember those mm -hmm. sentences where you have, have to repeat the sentence, one does one thing, another does another. So here's one word that means one another. Mm -hmm. And it functions just like that weird notion word in English. Okay? Um, let's see, what else have we got here? We've got grafaus, um, a derivative, clear derivative of the verb grafo. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about it is that it, although it tells you it means writer, it really means a scribe. Okay? That is somebody who writes things for other people, mm. and also a painter. Because Grafo, remember, we, I was talking about this. It means means to to paint in the sense that you paint vases. That is to fill in spaces with color. Mm. Nice, nice mm -hmm. concept. But but it's a it's a standard word for paint. And then graphique is the is the um, um, is the noun. What's missing here is techne. Hey, graphique techne is really what it means. So it means the art of writing. Of painting. 
Okay. Um, I think we, you know, there's more things we can say. The, the, the word demiurgos, which means a skilled workman, is the way it translates it. It's really an artisan. Okay. You're, you're fading out of the picture. Sorry. At least you, <laughs> all right. um, it means an artisan. Uh, and so that comprises healers, singers, um, people who can, with impunity, okay, in Greek city-states, travel between them. Okay, so it means a person who works the demos, uh, which means the district or the neighborhood, but you can work, and he can work, he or she can work any demos. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's the key idea of it. So these are traveling artisans. Okay. Yeah, a neat, neat concept. We got some, another number we're getting up there. We got and uh, nine. We still don't have one, two, three. And four, but we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten now, I think. Um, uh, let's see, other words of particular interest. There's the word for than, which is a, just the letter eight up without a rough breathing and with an accent, okay, with a smooth breathing and an accent. Consonant with that, we've got the, the adverb malon, that means more, mm -hmm. okay or ra rather is the limp-wristed British way of doing it, but let's just stick with more, okay? <laughs> um, and um, let's see, we got monos is a, an adjective, monos, mone, monon, which is, you have lots of cognates in English, like monotone and monotonous and, and uh, all those kinds of words. The adverb monon means only, but it's an adjective that you use predicatively, like uh, I alone, it comes after um, nouns in English, right? Mm -hmm. So we we went home alone is an adjective modifying the the subject, but it always comes in the predicate of the sentence, and it does the same thing as that in Greek. Um, let's see. I think that that's pretty much the high points of this lesson. Should we stop there? Yep.